joy and a pleasure to be in such a magnificent community. I'm so happy to be back here. Uh, whatever transportation issues I had to get here, I suddenly found myself driving to Barry to the Labor Hall on a gorgeous spring day. And uh, life is good. I'm really happy to be among you. Uh, about, oh, I had to to say it, but sometime in the early 90s, as the Soviet Union was collapsing and as pundits were getting on television and saying, see, capitalism has triumphed, socialism has been proven bad, something said to me, uh, that's not, I, I don't buy that. You know, there's something that has to be kept alive with these beautiful ideals, and how am I going to tell that story? And I came upon the idea that maybe through this wonderful song, The International, I could tell the story through a documentary film. And then I thought, okay, the first thing I have to do is get Pete Seeger on camera now, because it's 1993, and he's not going to last much longer. <laughs> and so I hurried up before I really had a sense about what the film was about, and I hadn't done any research or anything. I got a camera crew and went up to Pete's house, and after he served us a fantastic, his wife, so she served us a wonderful plate of whole grain pancakes. Uh, Pete sat down with his bow string guitar and talked about this song. And, you know, seven and a half years and a whole lot of sorus later, I finally finished the film. Uh, and Pete is, I think, a presence in this room. He's up on the wall over there. And among, you know, and, and, and his, I think that his inspiration and his words are just such a big part of, of how we all see the world. He is one of a few old white bearded men who have inspired me in my life. My dad is here, who is I think, one of the most astonishing humans I've ever met, and we can get into that later in more detail. But also, I have, I had the extraordinary honor of coming up here a couple of times and doing presentations and being part of this community, and was dazzled and just felt so welcomed and so privileged to know Chet Briggs whose presence And when I mention Chet's name, they start singing the international. <laughs> and what struck me about Chet and about this place and about the spirit that animates the work that so many of you and he do is the sense that we're not just protesting against things, we're looking to make a better world. The world that exists here, the world that Chet created, and his love of social change and his family and Chinese food, which to me is the ultimate goal of all happiness. You know, if there's Chinese food, the world couldn't be a terrible place. Um, in any case, it's it's wonderful to be here and in celebrating Pete and Chet and song singing for social change. Hooray. Enjoy the film and I'll uh, take questions afterwards. Now, just one piece of instruction. When you get to the chorus, that's when your fist goes up. But wait, wait out the verse. It's only when it's, it's the final conflict. Right? Right fist. So let's start. It's, Arise, ye prisoners of starvation. Let us 
Uh, questions, comments, thoughts, arguments about the film? In the back. How did I find those people all over? They took seven years to make this stuff. Um, number one was Pete, and number two was Billy Brandt. I knew that Pete and Billy had conspired to rewrite the words, and so I called Pete, I called Billy Bragg, somehow he said, oh yeah, I'll be in New York, and I went and filmed him. I had no budget to make this film, so I really had to wait for people to come to me. Uh, I was I was introduced, I, as soon as I put out the word I was making this film, people would say, I know a woman from the Philippines who's got a story to tell. And then somebody said, no, the Chinese student, Lee Lu, is going to be in New York shooting an interview for another movie. I said, can you shoot, ask him about this for me? Uh, Yehoshua Zamir in Israel, he's friends of a great film teacher that I knew, George Stoney, he said, you've got to talk to Yehoshua, he's on a kibbutz in Israel, I said, I can't get to Israel. Yehoshua put a camera on a tripod and interviewed himself and sent me the clip from Israel. It went on like this. I, you know, I get calls from people saying, I know that I have a great reggae story. <laughs> it just became this, this addiction. And then it was a matter of finding all that footage and all those versions of the song. I made this film. I, I made this film before the internet was really terribly much of anything. And so people would just call me up and say, I've got a cassette of the reggae version. Do you want it? So it was just like that for seven years until we finally put it together. My wonderful film editor and I sewed this together and finished it in 2000, seven years later. Thank you. Uh, I, want to say, you I just want to say a couple things about Pete. The first thing that happened when I started to make this film is I went, to, I, I called Pete and I said, would you do, you know, an interview about the international? He said, well, I'm very big film. I said, oh, fine. And I went up and we started the film again. And I was kind of naive about all this. I said, why would you want to do this story? And I said, I want to do this story because I think that this song expresses some very pure ideals that I really love. And he said, watch out for pure ideals. <laughs> and then he quoted E.B. White. He said, uh, strive for simplicity, but learn to distrust it. And I thought, okay, this is interesting. And then he pulled out his 12 string and he started to sing and play and talk. And 45 minutes later, I had not asked a second question. And he basically said, listen, young man. Here is what you need to understand. And he started to explain the complexity of all of this. I thought, wow, that's amazing. You know, we should all have a chance. Yes, back there. Uh, question. Uh, what is the movie about? What's the movie? The movie is about a song. A song that I love and a song that's very complicated and oh, full of hope yeah. and full of challenge oh, and disappointment. Yeah. That's what the movie's about.